Hello everyone, it's good to be back with you again, and uh, I hope everyone is well and is isolating well. I truly miss everyone. Uh, there's a difference in preaching to a camera and preaching uh, in the auditorium at the church building. Um, I want us to think about how good it's going to be to be back together, what a reunion that will be. Uh, have you thought about how you're going to react when you when you see everybody again, and uh, it, it's going to be a good time, and I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, isolation brings a lot of strange things. Uh, our normal lives have been uh, uh, interrupted. Uh, basically, life has been turned upside down, and, and that can happen at any given moment, but, uh, you know, I... This isolation in an unsettling reversal of my teenage years, I now hear myself yelling at my parents for going out. Uh, I guess we who are introverts uh, are teaching the lesson to extroverts how we really have fun. Uh, there's an interesting Jewish irony uh, about all of this, and that is that the Passover is quarantined by a plague. You find it you find it hard to end phone calls. I know a couple that I had yesterday uh, uh, twice. I almost said, "Okay, I've got to run," and then I realized I had nowhere to run to. Uh, isolation just brings so many different different uh, ideas and circumstances. I hope everyone is uh, heeding the government restrictions, and everybody is. Uh, is washing their hands. I was uh, I was told this past week. Uh, I, I recall when I was little, they always told us to wash our hands and wash them as long as you can say the alphabet, which is about 20 seconds. Uh, I got a better idea that only lasts 25 seconds, and that is a moderate uh, singing of Jesus loves me. And I'm finding that I'm doing that more often, and that keeps me a little bit more focused. Uh, and try to refrain from being uh, totally stir-crazy. But uh, I hope everyone is uh, heeding the, the restrictions on social uh, distancing and supporting those who um, have food businesses. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Frank and Glenda up at uh, the Frosty Frog and Jeremy and Shauna. And... Uh, do your best to support them. In fact, uh, Chris and I have gone up a few times this past week, and I think I'm going to ask Frank if he will paint a clergy parking spot in front of his store and just reserve that for us. But uh, but Jeremy and Shauna, I know that they uh, that they sell uh, Boston butts and uh, and wings, and if you can support them as well, that would be good. Neither one of them asked me to do that, but I really wanted to. To plug uh, their businesses as well. I want to talk for just a few minutes today about close encounters of the godly kind. So many times when uh, we're in periods of isolation, I I I'm thinking of Paul and Silas, for example, when they were in a Roman prison, they were isolated. What went through their mind in isolation? How did they glorify God in that way, and what can we do to glorify God during this period of, of, of isolation. How can we have these close encounters? Uh, we can't have close encounters right now of a physical kind because of our social distancing, but how can we maintain closer close encounters with, with God uh, of a godly kind? I want to suggest, first of all, that we have a daily encounter with the Word of God. And this, this should be understood. In fact, this should have been done even before we, we got into isolation. But how much more convenient, if I can use that word, is it to be in a situation where we are encountering God? And, and as New Testament Christians, we know that our encounters with God are through a study of His Word and, and in prayer. You know, I would truly worry now if, if, if I or anyone would not be studying the Bible now more than before. Think about it. We have so much more time now. 
and we can't put emphasis on things that that you know was so important and captivated our time before is there anyone among us that's not studying the bible more and praying more now if there is i would i would certainly encourage you to rethink that and and maybe reprioritize again study meditation and prayer it is much easier done in isolation you know, it was easier, you know, if we could ask the Apostle Paul, Paul, was it easier to write books of the New Testament from a Roman prison than when you were on uh, a boat or you were visiting the churches on your missionary journeys? Maybe God's desire, maybe a part of his providence during this isolation is that we have more close encounters with him of a godly kind. And we're studying and praying and meditation and meditating more. You know, the, the very, the very uh, inherent idea in meditation is what? Focusing upon that which you're meditating and trying to keep out all of the things that, that vie for our attention. Um, our minds are constantly being programmed by the world system. That's why we are encouraged throughout the Word of God to be in the world, but not what? Programmed by the world, of the world. And Romans 12 and verse 2 really brings out this idea when Paul says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Well, isolation really does a good job in, in helping us apply this verse. And he goes on to say, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When I think of the transforming agent, the transformer, if you will, that's, that's the word of God. Many of us grew up in the time of the original Star Trek. Uh, are you old enough to remember the original Star Trek? When many times the, the ones that were on the Starship Enterprise would have their transformers and they would flip open like a flip phone didn't have a flip phone then but that transformer would open up like the old flip phones and uh, Mr. Spock or Captain Kirk would be in a place and they would say beam me aboard Scotty uh, who was up in the ship in the star 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 uh, the starship enterprise and they would then be transformed. Their bodies would actually be transformed back to the ship. Well, this idea of being transformed, the prefix trans means across, and then form. The substance, which is moving, is, is formed in another place. You are transformed. Well, here Paul says that we take the transformer, we flip it open. And it actually may not take our body from place to place, but it needs, by the renewing of that mind, the reprogramming of that mind, bring our mind to another place. Not in the place of the world, but a mind that is experiencing a closer encounter of the godly kind. There was a study that was performed at the National Institute of Mental Health, and it was a very interesting study. This study was conducted where the subjects were asked to perform a simple motor task. They would simply be sitting at a table and they would be tapping a finger, different, different fingers of the different people, but they would just be tapping a finger on, on the table. And uh, the doctors then would conduct an MRI to identify what part of the brain was affected just by that simple motor skill. And uh, this exercise lasted for four weeks. And then after the four-week period, the brain was scanned again. And in every case, every single case, the uh, area of the brain that was involved in the task expanded. The simple finger tapping exercise, that simple task, recruited new nerve cells and it required new neuronal connections. 
And that finger dexterity, whichever finger you were using, became less awkward, more smooth, and it got used to what the exercise was like. Well, this same idea happens in Scripture as well. Actually, when we are involved in the skill of studying, meditating upon the Word of God, that's what will happen. We're actually downloading a new operating system that reconfigures our brains. And it's rewired to be aligned with the mind of Christ. And so that's why we are encouraged to think on certain things, to have this mind of Christ in you. How do you do that? Well, you re reconnect your mind, and the neurons of your brain, just like that finger tapping exercise, will help you expand the part of your mind that becomes more and more like Jesus Christ. When better to do this than during times of isolation? Is there a better time in all of our lives that we can have a closer encounter with God than when being isolated? You know, there were times when the Lord himself, during his ministry, he would be involved with many people. And the Bible explicitly tells us that he went away to get away, whether it was into a boat, whether it was into another part of the land, just to pray. And he put himself in isolation. I don't think that this is of any little significance. If we're going to have this close encounter of a godly kind, we need to encounter the Word of God daily, like those noble Bereans did. They, they were in the Word of God daily, and that brought a type of nobility to their character. And there's a second idea that we have here that in, in order to have this close encounter of a godly kind, and that's a daily encounter with prayer. You know, it is amazing when we think from the scripture what prayer truly does. Many times I think we compartmentalize our Bible study in prayer. Think about it. How many times do we say, okay, we're going to study the Bible here for a certain amount of time, and then afterward we're going to say a prayer? Or we may start our Bible study with prayer. I want to suggest something to you. Pray during your Bible study. Don't compartmentalize the two. Put them together. Allow the scriptures to guide your prayer. Perhaps there is a certain weakness that you're thinking about. And you go to the scripture to read about that. Well, read the scripture in between your prayer. And as you're studying and meditating on the scripture and then go to God in prayer, you're allowing the word of God. And as you psychologically say that prayer, you're molding your mind and you're rewiring it, not necessarily with the preconceived idea that you might have about how to handle that situation, and then praying to God about that. But while you're actually in the Word studying about that issue, and then you just pause, I, I, would, I would say it this way. When you're studying, pause and pray. And don't compartmentalize that prayer at the beginning or the end. Uh, when we look at this idea, and we, we pray to God, we study God's Word. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice uh, these two verses as that chapter begins. Therefore, since we have this ministry, the Apostle Paul is talking about uh, the apostles directly and us indirectly. We have this ministry of sharing, of teaching the gospel. As we have received the gospel or this mercy... We do not lose heart, the biblical heart again being the mind, and we're learning what to do in isolation with that mind. I, I, I've, I've heard people say during this time, you know, I'm bored. I just don't know what to do. Well, as a Christian, it's really, it should be really difficult to get to that point. 
But again, maybe we need to reconfigure our minds to understand how much we really have to do and what we can do during isolation. But Paul is saying, as we've received this ministry, as we've received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, okay, that's sin, not walking, here's a specific example, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. That's another blessing that comes from pausing while we're studying, having this closer encounter with God, and praying. Because we are imbibing that, imbibing that word specifically, directly, and then we're praying to God according to that word before it can be adulterated in any way, or clouded in any way, or handled deceitfully in any way. But by manifestation of the truth, which of course comes by the word of God, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. In every man's conscience, and especially in our own conscience. In the preceding chapter, chapter 3, look what Paul says in verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Interesting. The Godhead is one, one family. The Lord is the Spirit. The Lord played an integral role in revealing the Spirit, as the Holy Spirit did, and their minds, their wills are one. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the mind of the Lord is, where a human spirit, a human mind, has imbibed the mind of Christ, there is a powerful connection. That close encounter of a godly kind, that's wrought by the Word of God, coupled with, not separate and apart from, prayer. What a great and powerful opportunity and blessing we have through the providence of God during this time of isolation. But even during this time of isolation, we should never begin to think that we are isolated from God. That even though we're, because God is not, a physical being, like you and I are physical beings. See, we are isolated to some degree physically, but spiritually we are not. And it's like the relationship that we sustain with God from a spiritual standpoint. But lastly, and finally, in order to really realize this close encounter of a godly kind, we must never forget to worship God. And that's one reason for uh, this lesson today. It's the reason why the Word of God emphasizes worship and how important it is and how important it is to give to God the worship that He desires. Of course, worship is about Him primarily. And we, um, we hope and we've encouraged each other for this worship even though we are physically apart, to continue in isolation. You know, one of the prayers that I have prayed multiple times since this isolation, that, that we in the Woodstock family would never allow home worship to cease. Now, perhaps you've been engaged with your family in consistent home worship all along, and if you have, God bless you. But if this isolation has caused you to be more engaged in home worship, I pray that that won't stop. Because, you know, the old adage, the, the, the family that prays together stays together, I, 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 would, I would change that just a little bit. I, I wouldn't just uh, isolate prayer in that, in that paradigm. I, I, would, I would recommend and suggest the family that worships together on a continual basis, which includes even home worship, uh, stays together. Stays together with each other and stays together uh, with God. Have you found that, that conducting home worship is a little bit awkward? It, have, have you been used to doing this? Well, you know, the more we do it, the more that we're going to feel comfortable with it and the more we will want to make it a part of our lives because you know what worship does when you when you look at worship throughout scripture worship renews 
Worship allows us to begin again. Worship, um, in, in a very significant way, happens on the first day of the week, commanded to happen on the first day of the week. And when we come together, no matter what aspect of worship you're looking at, there's a renewal idea with that. We're new every time we come to worship. And so it is in our homes. You know, there there is a necessary need to reprogram from, a, from the brain's perspective those neurons and to exercise the part of the brain that is... That is uh, uh, invigorated, uh, that is activated during worship. And from a spiritual standpoint, that's how we all allow ourselves to have the mind of Christ. But who among us would say that for an hour only on Sunday morning is enough to do that when we go back out into the world's pattern that we are not to be of, to be in, but not of, who would say that one hour a week is enough for that reprogramming to take place? That for some reason we think that that is the special hour of the week, or perhaps the only hour of the week, that we have a close encounter of the godly kind. No doubt that should happen on, on more of a continual basis, but as it pertains to the world, we have to get our eyes our spiritual eyes, our spirit, if you will, out of that tunnel vision and allow God to renew that through our worship, through our prayer, and through our Bible study to have this close encounter of a godly kind. Worship opens spiritual eyes. That's why worship is not primarily about what it looks like, what it sounds like, and thinking that we are becoming more spiritual because primarily of the physical things. Worship is a mental, it is a, real, it is a spiritual experience in order to come closer to a spiritual God. When the other is emphasized, we don't come closer to God, we're actually coming further away from God. We've got to meet him on his terms. We've got to meet him on his character and on his form, and that is a spiritual form. A spiritual consideration. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in, in verse number 16, the Apostle Paul alludes to this very thing when he says this, Therefore we do not lose heart, we don't lose focus, we don't lose spiritual outlook. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man, the spiritual man, the mind, is renewed day by day. Well, sometimes we have to put our physical form in a position in order to develop the spiritual form, just like that finger tapping exercise of a physical form. That had to be done in order to get more to the uh, idea of how the brain functions. Well, to, uh, to see how we uh, our faithfulness is standing before God. We have to put our bodies in a, specific, in a specific way to see how that spiritual is going to result and what it's going to result in. And so this is why, even in isolation, we can certainly put ourselves in a position where we can become more spiritually uh, interactive with God. And all of worship does this, whether we're singing, whether we're praying, whether we are studying, whether we're partaking of the Lord's Supper or giving. Uh, it, it allows our minds to focus on that which will glorify God and will bring about a greater relationship for us with God. And that's why when we study, when we pray, we need to be thinking about heaven. We need to be singing about heaven, about salvation. And we need to have this close encounter with God. And this is how it comes. So, in times of isolation, we shouldn't think of what we're missing. We need to think of what we're gaining from a spiritual standpoint. Which, when the physical is all over, what we have left is our spiritual relationship with God. And so that's why Paul is encouraging the Corinthian brethren here, hey, don't lose heart. 
don't lose heart because, you know, a virus is uh, affecting the outward man that's perishing anyway. But remember that this inward man is being renewed day by day as we enjoy these close encounters of the godly kind, not just on a once a week basis, but on a day by day basis, realizing from here, the physical standpoint, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more and exceeding eternal weight of glory. You know, you could substitute right here this light affliction as the isolation from this China virus. It is putting an affliction on all of us, but compared to what we're going to experience if we handle this isolation properly, it is certainly a light affliction. It's like comparing the burden of Christ with the burdens of this world. Jesus said, uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light compared to the burden of sin. This isolation is not, should not be a game-changing event for the faithful Christian, but realizing how to use it to our advantage. As Paul would say here, to a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Because we do not look at the things which are seen. Why? We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith, the internal we walk according to the things which are not seen. For the things which we see, whether in isolation or not, are temporary. But the things that we don't see, hopefully we see them with the spiritual eye, those things are eternal. And those things are done with a close encounter of the godly kind through worship, through prayer, and through Bible study. And I, I hope, I hope with all of my being that those things have become more precious and more smooth to you as you incorporate them in your home worship, which I hope will continue until the day the Lord uh, returns again. Thank you for your attention, and I hope your worship has been a good experience and will continue to be. And uh, according to God's will, we will plan to see you next time. Thanks.